Today, construction firms are failing faster than ever. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news. Well, one of the things that I've seen in my surveys and my one-to-ones over the last few months is a number of people who contracted with a construction firm for the building of a property only to find that the firm has failed. And this is creating huge pain for many people, those perhaps who signed up under the home builder arrangements earlier on, or more recently, into a fixed price contract, which has now gone pear-shaped. And it's interesting that news.com.au reported that a staggering 2,349 construction firms have collapsed in the past year with fears that many more may fail soon. It's a perfect storm of high interest rates, soaring material costs, and an ongoing worker shortage across the Aussie industry that have set traders into freefall. In fact, insolvencies in the construction industry have reached an annual record this year, according to fresh data published by the corporate regulator ASIC. The September quarter was the worst for the industry in 2023, where 785 construction businesses traded as insolvent. Just this month, four building companies went bust in the first three days of the month. But the chief executive of Master Builders Australia, Denita Warne, said, She was surprised about the industry. She said, it's reassuring to see that businesses have remained resilient despite the volatility experienced within the building and construction industry over the past financial year. It's been a challenging time for some businesses that got caught up in the perfect storm of increased material prices, labour shortages and rising interest rates while locked into fixed price contracts. The broader economy has seen insolvencies rise 31% from 2022, while the construction industry has made up the lion's share of business failures. Of the 8,421 businesses that collapsed over the year, nearly 28% were in the building and construction industry. And amid a chronic shortage of housing fuelled by Australia's record overseas migration intake, the collapse of builders, contractors and subcontractors will not only have an immediate impact in the short term, but could also crimp future supply of new homes. Names such as BA Murphy, Condev Construction, Oracle, LDC, ProBuild, Pivotal Homes, Holbury Homes and Warren Homes were among the casualties. And Porter Davis, one of Australia's largest home builders, collapsed in March with 1,700 properties across Victoria and Queensland in progress. And a further 779 future homeowners had signed contracts where construction was yet to commence. The firm's 470 staff were left without work, while 1,000 unsecured creditors were left combined debts of $71 million. Most recently, Queensland-based W3D Construction went into liquidation, owing creditors almost $1.3 million, and the sporting pavilion project at Brisbane's prestigious the Southport School was still under construction. In a separate case, a string of businesses in the cabinetry and building products industry under the umbrella of GDK Group collapsed into liquidation with cumulative debts in excess of $45 million. And dome building projects, which completed bespoke building and renovation works in Melbourne's eastern suburbs, went into liquidation in October after failing to meet payments to the company's former director. However, despite the record number of construction firms that have collapsed, as many businesses were established in the sector. A total of 73,405 construction businesses ceased their operations in the 12 months to June 2023, yet 73,013 new firms also joined the sector over the same period, according to data from the ABS. Now, I want to look at that ABS data in more detail because there are quite a few interesting facts and figures to uncover. So here is the count of Australian businesses, including entries and exits. And this covers the financial years from July 2019 to June 2023. And the first thing to notice that over the 2022-2023 period, 
there were falls in the construction sector, just small falls. This, of course, includes new businesses, existing businesses, and closed businesses. But it's interesting to note that some other sectors, including wholesale trade and retail trade, and administration and services support, fell more significantly, while healthcare and social assistance had the strongest growth at over 6%. Now, the ABS also reported, and here we'll look just at the construction sector, that in the year 2022-23, there were 444,800 operating businesses in the construction sector. At the end of the year, 44,419, so there was a small drop of 392. And during that period, 73,000 entered and 73,000 roughly exited. And it's worth highlighting, I think, that some of those firms could well be the phoenixing of existing businesses. So the percentage change was a fall of 0.1% compared with across all industries, a growth of 0.8% over the last year. And the exit rate, 16.5%, which is higher than the average across all industries at 15%. Now, they also showed that looking at survivability, those operating in June 2019, compared with those a year later, well, they were 85.7%. So they dropped to 299,000. The following year, the survivability rate dropped to 76.4%. The following year, to 68.8% and last year down to 61.9%. So you can see the decay over multiple years. Of course, that was offset by some new businesses coming into the counts. Now, the ASIC's more detailed information relates to insolvency statistics, and this is where an external administrator has reported on a particular entity. And they show that last year, this is until the end of the financial year, 2022-2023, there were 1,574 construction businesses where an administrator was appointed. That could be a first, subsequent, or transitional appointment. Compared with that, the previous year, it was 1,155, and the year before that, 637. And yes, the construction sector is right at the top of the list. If we then look in more detail, state by state, you can see that in the year 1 July 2022 to the 30th of June 2023, 686 were failed in New South Wales. Victoria had 444, Queensland 239, and Western Australia 94. The other areas had small accounts. And then if we look at the distribution of full-time equivalent employees, 1,020 had less than five FTEs, 246 between five and 19, and 85 between 20 and 199. And one had more than 200 FTEs, and there were some not known. Now, if we then look at the cause of failure across the construction sector, and by the way, the administrators can actually give multiple reasons for failure. You can see here that undercapitalization, poor financial control, poor management of accounts, inadequate cash flow, poor economic conditions were very strongly represented, as were trading losses. And there was also a question of poor strategic management of the business, business restructuring and industry changes, as well as fraud. But the takeaway here is many of these failures were about the financial pressure on the business. And in fact, if you look specifically at the possible misconduct category, you can see there that insolvent trading, the obligation to keep financial records, and also director's duties about trading solvent rather than insolvent are by far the most significant. Now, if we then look at the estimated total realizable assets from the business, you can see that of the 1,500, 423 had less than 
$1, and a further 381 between $1 and $10,000, and 158 10000 to $20,000. And if you go up the scale, you can see there that there are some with more significant assets, including seven with between $5 million and $10 million, and 10 over $10 million in assets. If you look at estimated total liabilities, 18 had between $1 and $10,000, whereas 382 had $1 million to less than 5 million, and 537, 250,000 to less than 1 million. And some had significantly higher liabilities, 70 between 5 and 10 million, and 100 over $10 million. Looking at the unpaid employee remuneration and entitlements, well, some had significant liabilities, interestingly, spread across the board there. The total count between $1,000 and $10,000 was 97, and between $10,000 and $50,000 was 90. Some, of course, were not applicable. And then look at the secured creditors by industry in terms of the amount owed to secured creditors. And you can see there that 1,200 had zero, 193 had between $1 and $250,000, 48, $250,000, $500,000. But there were 30 with over $10 million and 11 between five and $10 million, which are big numbers. It's also worth noting that some owed tax and other statutory debt. So that would include things like GST and obligations to the ATO. Remember that the ATO started ramping up their back claims on firms over the last year. So 420 owned between a dollar and 100,000. 352 owned between 100,000 and 150,000. 235 owned between 250,000 and 500,000. 162 between 500,000 and a million. And 185 owed more than a million dollars, somewhere unknown. So looking at the total number of unsecured creditors, 1,160 had less than 25, but 20 had more than 200, and some were not known or not applicable. Looking at the amount owing, well, 531 owed less than $100,000, 230, $100,000, $250,000, 193000 $250,000 to $500,000. But there were some owing between five and $10 million, actually 42, and 57 owed more than $10 million. And the final rather disturbing point is estimating the cents on the dollar to unsecured creditors. There were 1000 276 with 0% being offered. 98 between 0 and 11 cents on the dollar. And a small proportion with higher percentages, some not applicable. So in some cases, it's quite clear that people are not going to get much back. So very important set of statistics here. And I just want to leave you with two quick thoughts. The first is, my expectation is we're going to see more trouble in the construction sector in 2024. That's because conditions have not fundamentally changed. Interest rates are still high. The cost of material is still rising, even if not quite as fast. And the difficulty of getting labor is still there as well. So that means we can expect to see more difficulty as building construction firms try to manage those fixed price contracts, which are clearly underwater. In some cases, there are little clauses in the small print, which allows them to transfer some of those costs onto their clients. But of course, that's quite fraught, and some have been less successful in doing that. But the other point to make here is that this is going to continue to cramp momentum in the construction sector. 
we're not building enough properties relative to the migratory intake that we've been reporting in recent times, half a million plus, of course, in terms of new people coming to the country, but probably around 150 to 170,000 properties being constructed at the moment, not enough. The other point, though, is looking at individuals who've contracted with a construction firm or who are thinking about it. It's very important if you're about to enter into a contract with a builder, check them out. Make sure that they've got the significant resources behind them to be able to complete the job. Also, we see quite a few properties half built with little chance of getting completed anytime soon. And so some of that property is now coming back on the market half completed. But of course, if you enter into a contract to complete a half built property, well, you're going to have to put the price up and you don't know the quality of construction to date either. So that's a problem. And like I said before, there are little clauses in some of the contracts these days to give builders wriggle room. So if you are thinking of contracting with a construction entity, be it large or small, read the small print, perhaps get legal advice and make sure you're not walking into a bear trap. Bottom line is this, the construction sector is going to continue to struggle over the next year or two. Maybe if interest rates come down, that will create more momentum. But I also do expect some bailouts, maybe from state governments or other entities, to try and help the construction industry through. It's been done before. It'll be done again. But these scary numbers show that the construction sector is in difficulty. And why? Because the cash flow problems that we've seen over the last two or three years have not gone away. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.